Hey everybody, and welcome into TechStacks Rewind presented by T-Mobile. They want to remind you to visit T-Mobile.com slash across America so you can learn how you get more value and coverage with T-Mobile. And a good show today, episode 2733, we have the Go Hour, and we talked about Mike Evans' greatness. Some people don't put him as a Hall of Famer, just shit. What are you thinking? What are you smoking? Of course he's a Hall of Famer. We kind of went through some of his credentials on the show. The Aggie Dance team, they're heading out to the National Championships this Thursday. We had them in studio talk about what it takes to get there. It was fun conversation. Pat Henry with our track and field report. Always good times with Coach Henry. A chain running. Elite, elite level. We knew that was going to happen. He can still get better as time goes on. And Jason Howell talks a little recruiting with us on a Tuesday. It is Tech Sags Rewind presented by T-Mobile. People forget like with the bad quarterbacks. Yeah. Other than the last two seasons, he did not have Tom Brady. He had, I'll, I'll give you a couple of the names, Jameis Winston, who had a nice year there, mm. uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, who's been a journeyman, Mike Glennon, Josh McCown. Like, this guy has done it. Now, the thing that I think will hurt him is that there is a log jam at wide receiver of guys that you may put Mike above or right around the same level. Like, I put him above, um, who, who's the name that I had on here? Um, Torrey Holt. But Torrey Holt is a name that's still not in there. Um, there's other names out there as well that have not gotten in. Reggie Wayne, 10-time All-Receiving Yards, Super Bowl champion, three-time All-Pros, six-time Pro Bowl. He's not in yet. So there, there is a logjam. Andre Johnson, who I think is a Hall of Famer. Some people outside of Houston don't. Um, you know, he's, he's still waiting. So when his day comes, to me, he's a no-brainer, especially if you look at some of the st- statistics that he's in there. Only five players in NFL history have recorded 70-plus touchdowns and 8,500 receiving yards in their first 115 games played. Uh, Mike Evans, Marvin Harrison, Calvin Johnson, Randy Moss, Jerry Rice, all of those minus Mike Mike Evans are in the Hall of Fame. And you know what Mike does that all these so-called great, well, I'm not going to so-called, all these other great receivers do that that they don't do? He blocks his ass off. He does. You know, you just, and and ask uh, Terrence Newman about that. Yeah. If you've ever seen that video. Yeah. And and he's also not a diva in a position that has a lot of divas and they bring attention upon themselves. Antonio Brown, like there's players, and he's not the only one. There's a lot of people who put a lot of attention on themselves for things outside of being a hey, great wide Mike's receiver. The guy that took a pay cut, yeah, so they could try to win another championship. There's, yeah, Mike might get overlooked for a while, but eventually he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. He's just too good. Yeah, and I was actually looking at some of his numbers, comparing them <clears throat> with others. Okay, so. Looks like DeAndre Hopkins came in in 2013. Mike Evans came in in 2014. A lot of people think DeAndre Hopkins is a Hall of Famer. Okay, mm-hmm. Mike Evans has more touchdowns. Okay, and then you could say, well, DeAndre's had bad quarterbacks. They both had bad quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, DeAndre had for a couple seasons Deshaun Watson, who put up some big numbers with him, but you know he had some bad quarterbacks. And Mike Evans had Tom Brady for just a couple seasons, but he's got more touchdowns um, in in less games. 71 to 68. So there, there, there's that. Um, and it looks like yards per, um, looks like he's right above year since 21. He's got more yards per 21 yards, um, beyond 21 yards, I should say. He's got a lot of statistics that put him in the very top echelon of all these great wide receivers in this kind of renaissance of passing. Mike Evans is a throwback wide receiver slash guy who can do it all right now. What about Amy, who's not here with us this morning, who leads you guys? What what is she? I mean, she's got history with the Atlanta Falcons as a cheerleader. She's got a lot of, you know, performance background. How how much does she help get everything set? Oh, she she does a lot in she the background. Always going. She is a constant moving machine. Um she really makes sure that we get more than we we have. Um she'll, you know, um does a lot of background work, things that we don't know, and you know we we see it and we appreciate it, and she just makes sure she makes sure that we know that we're you know valued and that you know we are happy to be here and that she wants us there and she wants us to work hard. So she she does a really great job at that. I think a good example is yesterday she um, she got a big F two fifty and she drove all the way to Nacogdoches to borrow. Um, we compete on a specific type of flooring and it's very expensive, so we we borrow it from another school. Um, and she she drove down there, she drove back all by herself, and it was just so funny seeing this little five foot tall lady driving this huge yeah. truck. So I, I got to imagine that these trips are not cheap. How do people help you? Because I'm sure you guys do fundraisers and whatnot. Are, are there things that people can do to help? 
Yeah, so we um, we fundraise throughout the year, and we are just very grateful for the donors that we do have because they are a very big reason why we get the resources that we get and we get um, just the extra things that we need. Um, what else do we do? I mean, uh, usually every year we have a, um, a spirit of giving link, mm-hmm. which comes around Christmas time, and it's uh, just a link that opens, and you can donate any amount of money that you can and um, we also do some t-shirt sales and bingo cards and just anything that we can think of to kind of make it fun and like an exciting way to raise money. All right, both of you, last thing, just uh, what does it mean to compete at the national level representing Texas A&M, knowing that you've done it before and you're hoping and you probably will do it again? Um, It's such an unreal experience being able, you know, Texas A&M is such a big, like, well-known school, and the fact that we were able to go out there last year knowing that, like, we're Texas A&M, we're D1, there was a lot of pressure on us to, like, do really great, and I'm so happy that we came back with two national championship titles, and I think it's great that we're able to represent A&M, represent Texas A&M athletics, and be able to do that and what we love doing and being able to train and just show people that we are – more than just palms and you know a pretty outfit we are a lot more than that I think for me it's just like being able to represent A&M in the best light that I can and like you know you grow up dreaming of being the girl on like the sidelines at basketball and you're just it's so like unreal to think that like there's a little girl sitting in the stands who like wants to be me when she grows up and so I just like I do it for her I do it for that girl who like just is giving everything she has to get where I have been so fortunate to be. Whenever you're here, I, I, I think of questions because of what my kids are going through. Yeah. The middle school track yeah. kids that are doing very well, but they they expect the PR every time yeah. they run. And if not, it's a failure. And I'm like, yeah. there's so much that goes into it, buddy. The yeah. weather, your nutrition that day, there's, you know, the 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 mind, especially I think in track, it's, oh, it's yeah. so, such a key part. It's the training too that you're trying to you're you're trying to get track is about one effort, and then maybe you get another effort, and then maybe you get another effort. But your your boys is going to be about uh, about the uh, about a, a district meet, and maybe one after that regional meet, and then maybe one after that. Training can't be the same all the time, and and you you have to you have to train through some meets. So there's no way that you can think about PR and every time you step on the track. It just can't happen. You can accomplish something that you're working on in training every time. But running a personal best all the time is just a, a little bit out of You shouldn't be thinking that way. No, no. no you shouldn't even think time. You should think about, okay, what am I supposed to be doing? One day we'll talk <laughs> off air because they uh, they just they make me laugh about the, the mindset of a young man. But let's yeah. talk let's talk about Cherokee and how great she was. Four hundred meters. She's yeah. the world leader there at fifty. Yeah, and and run fifty flat. She uh, she's one that we're talking exactly what we're just talking about. It's still a, it's still what you think. And and when she lined, this is the best she lined up mentally. Physically, she's been ready to do this for for a little while. Mm-hmm. She wasn't ready mentally. And I know that sounds a little bit odd to people, but that's what it is. That's what it's about is she could run very competitive, but she can't run great until your really, really brain is really working right and it's starting to. That doesn't mean it'll do it again next week right. or the week after, but she's, she's starting to get things together between her ears. And, and then Layla on the 200. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. You know, you don't get a half a second better in training. That doesn't happen from one week to the next. What she used, what she trained for since the first year she got here. It's it's never stops. It's it's continual training, and she's just now starting to believe in herself. She's starting to understand. Wait a minute, I, I think I can do this, and she gets in a race now. Her start is terrible. She, her acceleration is terrible. Um, I better not say terrible, but it's not good. But then after that. You better watch out because she's really strong. She's and she's not very big, but she can get up and run when it's time. But she's got to she's got to improve the first part of her race to really be great. 
So one of the negative recruiting tactics you're, you're hearing potentially is that all these defensive linemen going to A&M, when are you going to play? So when, when <laughs> they're getting these guys that are still interested, even though there was mm-hmm. the longest haul ever, what, what, is, what are some of the conversations you're hearing about, yeah, I want to be in that environment? Uh, absolutely. Most, uh, I mean, we've heard it from Alabama and, and Georgia in the past, and you see it right now with Georgia's defensive line uh, in the NFL draft. Uh, right now, um, you know, they, um, <laughs> they, um, you know, the, the competition breeds, breeds uh, competition, iron sharpens iron. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing new. Uh, but, um, you know, these top athletes, uh, especially on the defensive line, where there's a rotation, where you can get good quality playing time being a backup or, you know, a part-time starter. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, really they haven't, um, it, it hasn't really affected them too much uh, as far as the D line is concerned. You, you got Will Norman coming in um, this, uh, this weekend on an unofficial. He's a guy that camped at AM. He's at IMG. He's, uh, he named it AM in his top seven. You got Sadir Mitchell, a defensive tackle out of New Jersey, coming in this, uh, this weekend as well out of the New Jersey area. Um, and, and, Really, I think what AM's done to combat that, and and you heard it with LT when LT Overton when he committed, was they lay out a plan and they talk to these guys and they say, Hey, this is what we're doing, and this is how you fit into this. So just because the numbers may look daunting or whatever, here's how it works. And they they do the 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 prospects are buying into it, the prospects and their family, because Jimbo and the staff do such a great job developing those relationships and building that trust. And, um, you know, you hear about culture and, and family whenever, whenever these kids and their, and their families come in. And that's, you know, that's really helping them combat a lot of these issues. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Talk to us about, uh, you know, who do you want to beat on this Aggie football schedule? Who's the 1A? Who's the 1B? All that was discussed on the show. I want to hear from you. 